And what's up everybody? It's your boy Uchi and today I wanted to get my complete thoughts like I promised the other day on Pokemon I Choose You, the movie that just got done being featured in select theaters only for its four day theatrical release and man well, I tell you, it was definitely worth the money, definitely worth the time and experience. I really enjoyed it a lot. It hit me here. There's a lot of heartfelt moments, but there's a lot of things that they changed, a lot of things that they took into directions that I don't really understand why they did. But that's why we're here. We're going to talk about it, and we're pretty much going to review the movie in full from what I can remember seeing it only a day ago. So, again, warning right now, here is your spoiler alert. We are going to be talking about spoilers. So let's get right to it. Pokemon I Choose You. Man, this movie is something that a lot of people actually thought was going to be a retelling of Gen 1. Which, I'm not going to lie, I thought they were going to implement a lot of Gen 1 and the generations following it into this one movie because they put in Generation 2, Generation 3, and pretty much some were represented more than others. But the fact of the matter is, all seven generations had some kind of, of a presence in this film. More predominantly, we were looking at Gen 2 and Gen 4, and then some inserts of Gen 7 with the debut of Mars Shadow. Now, Mars Shadow, uh, from my understanding, I don't even think Mars Shadow has made his appearance in the anime yet, and I know that they were just giving out free codes for his inclusion in the Sun and Moon games, and I'm pretty sure you can obviously trade up and put him in the Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, which is coming out very soon. And it really wasn't. It was actually what I would like to call the multiverse of Pokemon. This is an alternate universe where it's a it's actually a different story of the trainer, Ash Ketchum. And Ash Ketchum literally lived a completely different life in this version. I want to also say that he was a true 10 year old and it showed in this movie and it's like the more you watch it the more you realize like wow he's actually acting his age like because a lot of people i'm sure were watching this and they were saying to themselves man why ask such a right now and hey i don't really blame you because at first thought i was like why is he acting like this again the man or the boy is only 10 years old there was parts in the movie where he was very ash like he was very like oh it's all about being friends building friendships bonds all that good anime stuff and then next thing you know he loses he loses a battle with his newly gained charmillion and yes my man gets a charmander you know your boy loves me the charmander charmander charizard and he loses to cross who cross is a trainer that somehow managed to get an incineroar while leaving Charmander in the rain to die. And yes, they borrowed a lot of elements from the original TV anime into this new movie, which, I mean, it wasn't all that bad. And I can understand why they changed things and they like, you know, it was basically like an, an overwrite, but not really. It's an alternate universe. So he had an Incineroar and he battled Charmeleon. Now, come on, guys. My man Ash just got the Charmeleon. Charmander was fresh out the freaking baked oven. Charmeleon was brand spanking new. Facing an Incineroar? I mean, come on. I love me to fire types, but my man Incineroar body Charmeleon free. And then Ash went on and felt very sad and mad and depressed and like all sorts of emotions and he what i would like to call had a fit he had a 10 year old fit he actually ran off and he literally said i should have used pikachu he was putting the blame on his pokemon which is something that i actually have not seen in a protagonist in like a very long time or ever actually but now that i think about it this is like the first time where we're seeing ash actually act his age and obviously going on with the movie that all changes it flips he apologizes and i'm not gonna spoil too much because i do want to give you guys reason to go watch it but obviously since i'm reviewing the movie from what i remember all the parts I will be revealing some things, but I will say this. There was a part where he passed out and he was going through a dream where there was a world of no Pokemon. And then it was like he had to remember his friend, his buddy, that he had such a tight bond with. And as soon as he remembered Pikachu, all the color came back and then he woke up and then his friends were around him and all was well and he apologized and he got back up and he was going to keep moving forward to become the rainbow hero oh yeah that's right the rainbow hero 
What the hell is a rainbow hero? A rainbow hero is actually a person who apparently if you get the rainbow wing of a ho-oh, that means, first of all, the ho-oh liked you. It restores, like, that. that's the part that didn't really make sense. That's one of the things that I didn't really fully understand. That there was all this stuff about rainbow heroes and this and that. They made a lot of emphasis about rainbows. Those that follow a lot of what if Pokemon scenarios, you know where I'm going with this one. Oh yeah, and also to mention the friends that he was talking about, it was not Misty and it was not Brock. It was two completely new characters that we have not seen in a TV anime ever before. One that wanted to be a professor, the other was apparently the daughter of someone important, it looked like she was like a gym leader that had a Napoleon and she had a Piplup. Another big thing that they took from the original TV anime, which I don't know why they made me live through this 20 years later and have me rewatch Ash letting go of Butterfree. Because yes, it happened again. But in real talk, thinking about it, it only added on to the maturity that Ash had to go through through this movie. It's like they had him act like a 10 year old and then he like matured so quick with just the decisions that he was making after that crybaby moment that he had with losing. He instantly turned into this character that we're used to, that he cares about everyone, he wants to be friends with anyone, but everyone, but then at the same time, he wants what's best for them. So in that situation, my man saw Butterfree, he saw his man's Butterfree was happy with the lady Butterfree, and he was not about to let his boy pass up on them Butterfree cheeks. <laughs> so then the movie goes on, and then they finally get to this mountain where they're supposed to put the rainbow wing on, and then the whole point of the movie was literally, it was like they had the excuse of rainbow hero this, rainbow hero that, but like, realistically, Ash wanted to just meet Ho-Ho again to have a battle. And then in the middle of the movies, we get to see glimpses of Raikou, Suicune, and Entei. But they didn't really have any important parts. And it's so funny because Entei had the most screen time. Because you know Entei's the best freaking th of the three. Suicune had the second most showing. And Raikou showed up for literally a couple frames. And left just like he normally does. <laughs> now I think about it, the only gym battle we actually see Ash do is against Erika. He got the badge th at, like for his third badge, like he skipped Lieutenant Surge. And my one friend, he made a joke. He's like, oh, like, no, he didn't teach no one to cut. That was pretty funny. But yeah, the whole movie was just basically about Ash trying to battle Ho-Oh because he, so, he sees Ho-Oh in the beginning of the movie. And that was basically like what set the whole pace of the tone and everything. My man woke up late. He got his Pikachu. That was all still there. They basically had the scene where... He encounters Misty, borrows the bike, he's trying to get Pikachu to the, the Pokemon Center to heal him, whole interference with the Spearows, and then it's that dramatic scene where he's standing, he's like, I'm Ash Ketchum and you're not gonna go through me, uh. and then the thunder, and the... Na, 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 na. They didn't have that song in there in the movie, which I was actually kind of upset, I was actually really looking forward to hearing that, because that song was godlike. And then Pikachu comes out of nowhere, hops on his shoulder, and Pikachu! Freaking kills all the Spiro. Bam. Then that's where their friendship is formed. That actually happened within like the first 10, 15 minutes of the movie. Like I said, no Brock, no Misty. So there was none of that in between that it filled up the entirety of the episode back in the day from what I remember because episode one and then you see Ho-Ho. Right at that point was like, bam. This is the movie. This is the point of the movie. This is the plot. I want to battle Ho-Ho. That was realistically what it was about. And... Yeah, it wasn't a retelling, like I said in the beginning of this video. It was ne never a retelling. It was a multiverse story. They did things that just really mess with our heads, and I'm not gonna talk about what you think I'm gonna talk about just yet. I wanna bring up this character who I don't remember his name, but he was some kind of journey guy who looks for ancient things, and he had a beard, and everyone, the rumor was, oh, that's red. That is red because look at the man's hat. That is Red's freaking hat. Why is he wearing Red's hat? Is that actually Red? Is this Red from another freaking... You know, it's so confusing. But that was one of the things that they messed with my head and I didn't appreciate it. But I was like, okay, whatever. And then I already mentioned the Butterfree stuff. I was just, personally, I was just... I, I, I had. It was a hard time for me dealing with it as a child. And the fact that I'm here now, all these years later, and it's still... Hit me. And then finally, the moment we're all waiting for, Pikachu talks. Everyone was pretty much crapping on it and saying like, why the hell 
would they have Pikachu talk? And why would they have Pikachu talk as a female when Pikachu is clearly a male? I mean, look at his tail. We, after all these years of Pokemon, we know that there's two distinctive features that you can tell apart a female and male Pikachu. Male Pikachu has the straight edge tail where female Pikachu is shaped like a heart. So why, if they had this scene, did they have Pikachu not only speak English, but she spoke as a female? Now you might say, oh, we're in 2017. Who knows what gender Pikachu really is? But I'm not trying to make no jokes. I'm just trying to say, why? Why did they even do that? And here's my theory behind that. I think that it wasn't something that if the other standbyers were closer that they could have heard Pikachu talk. I think it was actually in a moment where if you look closely even at the clip itself, it looked like Ash was going through a fuzzy point. Like he was actually dying at that rate. So there was some kind of like distortion between him and Pikachu and that Pikachu was probably just trying to say Pika Pika he just heard it in his own dialect which is English for this movie another thing that I could think of just to make an excuse is that they took the fact that the original voice actor of Pikachu is indeed a female but it's a Pokemon so what's the what who cares someone up there in, around that round table thinking all the making all these executive decisions I don't know if it was Masuda himself but someone had the great idea like, oh, with Pikachu, we have a female voice actor. Let's keep it a female voice actor, even though it's a male. But I mean, again, it's not that it's not that serious because female voice actors are always used for young male protagonists or just male characters altogether. So what if it was just that Pikachu was just that young that they had a female character voice for character? I don't know, I could just be making up excuses just to fray it away from the fact that MAN WAS IT SO WEIRD JUST TO SEE AND HEAR THAT JOHN? I mean, I'm not gonna lie, it was very cringy. I was like, what? It was very odd. It was very odd. And no one was expecting it. And there's a whole viral video going around where the guy was like, It's because... Yeah. That was one thing that will make people never forget about it all in all i will say i enjoyed it a lot it was very fun it was very cool but one other amazing thing that they did was they remixed the original song i gotta shout that out i'm not even i'm gonna put that above the fact that they gave my man charizard screen time because you know your boy loves charizard but the fact that they took my original song and they made it sound Glorious. If you haven't seen it, I definitely encourage you guys to go watch it when it becomes available legally, of course. And I encourage you to definitely tune in when it comes on TV because I'm pretty sure I heard something about it being featured on Disney XD. So definitely check that out and let me know what you guys thought about it. If you've seen it or what you thought it would have been about, what you would have liked to see in this. And if you think that all this rainbow dropping and all that talk about rainbow this, rainbow hero that. If you think they're gonna go back on that word and say when they said that they were never gonna make a game where it was all generations in one. You do realize that the Nintendo Switch is gonna have a Pokemon game on it next year, right? And let me know what you guys thought about this and everything I just talked about in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe, hit me up on Twitter. Let me know what you guys thought about this in my Discord especially on my Discord, and make sure to follow me on Twitch, you can talk to me about this while I play some games, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to me on my Rift so we can watch some anime together, live, legally, and if you support the boy, support the boy on the Patreon page, so I can do this way more often for you guys, and I'll see y'all next time.